Welcome to the Chat Club Podcast, where you are not alone in your mental health journey. It's okay that you're not okay today. Where discussions on mental health challenges like anxiety, grief, interviews with people that deal with challenges in mental health. Also, discussions on positive coping mechanisms, positive motivation, self-help, a little hope, and thinking creatively. Remember, there's only one rule in Chat Club. Everybody talks about Chat Club. Take a seat, relax, and listen. Here is your host, Alan Hilchie. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone had a fabulous holidays. And if you didn't, it's understandable. Sometimes we go through a lot of grief, missing people that have passed away or relatives or being away from each other. Uh, naturally comes with the holidays. I hope you did have a positive, and I hope 2023 is going to be our year. Uh, I know last year it increased my downloads and stuff like that. I've done a lot of different things. So the positives I'm looking forward to for this year in my podcast is increasing my audience, increasing more activity, maybe getting a Patreon system. I've been talking about that for a couple of years. Maybe, you know, taking that money that people donate to me to do other different things or increase, you know, social media and mental health for all, uh, investing in the communities and different stuff like that, what I will be doing. So this year, I want to focus on something positive to start off the new year. I wanted to, I know I'm a little late in the new year, but that's okay. Regardless, I'm here. So the thing I want to focus focus on today is positive mental health. Good mental health, according to the World Health Organization, is defined as a state of well-being where individuals are able to, one, realize their own potential, realizing your own potential, realizing your skills, what you bring to the world, that you see yourself as being a positive contribution to your community or society or co-workers, whatever. Realize your potential. Realize that you can do more. Realize that what you have to offer is positive and a good thing. Number two is working productively. So working productively in your organization, home life, and having that good work balance. Uh, that 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 is a key component, having that work balance where working in home life in your relationships and having night out, date out, you know, dates scheduled and stuff like that. Number three, I'm looking for cope with normal stresses of life. So normal stresses of life, and I understand what, info, you know, inflation, cost of living is, is going out of sorts. I know in Nova Scotia, they a lot of people, have product, property taxes have gone up significantly which puts a lot of stress in the household and, uh, you know, owning a home, which puts us into uh, living in apartments and stuff like that. And and some people don't like that. Nevertheless, um, having mechanisms to cope with this type of stress and, you know, being planning and, you know, being budgeting with your money and whatnot. Another one is make a positive contribution to the community. So what I think in this is making contributions, whether it's a monetary donation, your time. Your time is very valuable sometimes. And I've been looking at the things to do in the community myself. Um, I'm looking at various things. Another thing is clean out your closets, uh, excess clothes, uh, mitts, hats, coats, winter coats that you don't wear. You can look at socks, you know, obviously not use socks or underwear that sort of thing but I mean if you have stuff that's brand new that you're not going to wear or clothes that you have are old that old to you but new to someone else is the homeless shelters are always looking for kind donations and that sort of thing so that I mean that's things you can do in the community mental and psychological well-being encompasses the way you feel about yourself but also the way you deal with external situations and the quality of your relationships so it's also important to remember that positive mental health is simply the absence of men, mental health issues such as depression or anxiety. Being, I mean, it's not simply that you're lacking these because we always do, I should say, such as depression and anxiety. Being mentally healthy is predominantly about the presence of positive characteristics such as feeling as purpose, content, maintaining full, fulfilled relationships and participating in life to the fullest so these are things that to help with your mental health not saying that you're not going to have some issues where you're going to have challenges and those things are going to happen but with your positive mental health 
you should have those couple mechanisms to help yourself navigate through that sort of stuff. And that's also important when you're doing that. So other features of positive mental health include feeling positive emotions like optimism, happiness, love, compassion, satisfaction, and joy. Key components, obviously. And another one is goal setting. You're going to set some goals for yourself this year. Like my goal this year was to lose weight, uh, continually doing that myself. Um, another one is having confidence in new situations. So, you know, when you meet new people or you're in work situations where it's new surroundings, have the confidence to, you know, and, and it comes back to realizing your own potential and how you interact. So that's a good one to, to make note of biggest thing is avoid that self blame when things go wrong it's not always your fault that things happen it just seems like life throws a curveball and you just have to adjust how you think and how you do things and it may not be according to what you want in life but in, in the grand scheme of things you have to learn to stop blaming yourself for certain things that happen how people react to you because maybe they have issues so you have to think outside the box in this grand scheme of things and another thing, positive feature of mental health would be having good self-esteem, being happy, love yourself, understanding that you're successful and understand what you have and what you have to offer is such a key component. So I wanted to talk about what is positive mental health. And those are the key components that I have researched and, you know, I expanded on some of my own ideas, but this is generally positive mental health and there could be things that I'm missing but these are some key th that factors I thought that were great so my next question is why is positive mental health important so we talked about positive mental health what it is now we're going to talk about why it's important positive mental health allows you to enjoy all the activities you want and participate in it doesn't mean you'll never be sad or you'll never go through emotional challenges. But those with positive mental health will be able to bounce back more easily from these experiences. And this is called mental resilience. Key component. Being resilient and understanding that you can only control what you can do and how you positively restructure your words and, and, and also how you think. And, and it's really important. So... Having mental resilience means individuals having the tools to cope with adversity, stress, and trauma. So those are some things. So four ways to foster and to help positive mental health is adopt more positive mental attitude. So when we get into it, there's four components that I thought were a part of it that I've looked on the internet. So I think sharing some of this would be beneficial to you and me. Because I'm going over this. And when I do my podcast, sometimes it helps me to remember some of these things. Because sometimes your brain is a negative space and you need to get yourself out of it. So the first thing is take care of your physical needs. We may be talking about health of your mind, but mental health and your body are also interconnected and intertwined. A healthy mind, healthy body goes to the old Rome, Roman saying, and in many ways, this is absolutely true. It's difficult to feel mentally on point if your physical needs are not being met or catered to. For example, it's very hard to feel good about yourself if you feel unwashed or if you had nothing to eat. If you're not hygiene, you know, take a shower and clean yourself up, do clothes. It doesn't start the day off good and you're grungy and, and you haven't had anything to eat. So those are two things that you need to take care of. So... When caring for yourself, make sure that you do these things that I'm going to say, or try to. Eat nutritious meals that include maintain all the food groups, proteins, carbs, fruits, vegetables, and fats. Make sure they're good fats, like, you know, salmon and fish are good. Enjoy a good standing standard of bodily, bodily and environmental hygiene. This means wash yourself, your clothes, clean your living space regularly, because if you don't, you can get sick from that sort of thing. So make sure you do that. Drink lots of fluids, water, particularly water, to avoid dehydration, which doesn't feel good. 
avoid stimulants such as coffee and alcohol it can adversely impact your mood now coffee just make sure it's moderation you don't have to quit it make sure you do it moderate and be responsible with that sort of thing avoid harmful activities such as smoking and drinking excessively so i mean that's just common sense now make sure you get enough sleep because you need at least about eight hours of sleep every night is what they're saying me, I try to get, most of the nights I get six. I'm okay with that, but try to try to make sure that you get a good routine when you go to bed. And do that successfully every night and you'll feel better. Number two, make time for social connection. We as humans are social creatures. And even most the most inverted among us find comfort in company of like-minded people. The best interaction of all is the face-to-face -face connection. So going for coffee and, you know, going to a movie or taking a hobby, painting, uh, signing up for classes or, or doing stuff with other people is, is very beneficial. It makes you feel not alone and also it just makes you feel good that people are listening and engaging. Phone calls and video conversations are, you know, that's great for keeping long-distance relationships alive like family or friends that you haven't had but nothing beats the physical presence of somebody so make sure that you know you can do that have time for your social connection having a chat with family friends close members of your family gives you opportunity concerns vent worries about what may we weighing you down so it's good to do that sort of thing if things are bothering you when, in a sense you just gotta let them things out and vent, and you don't have to make it a complaint session. Just kind of like, you know, things that are bothering you. Because you don't want to mount it up, and then you have a great big uh, collapse. And you, and that's just keeping good mental health practices. Number three, exercise, physical activity, and positive mental health. Exercise is, is a way to help treat mental health complaints. According to research by... Health Direct, when you do physical activity, your brain releases endorphins, which helps you lift your mood and also give you some energy. Regular exercise can also help you sleep better and feeling more one with yourself. You don't think you need to be running miles or pumping weights in the gym, like just exhausting yourself. Simply go for a short walk for 20, 30 minutes, tackling weeds in the garden. Just to elevate your heart rate, just to make sure that, you know, you're getting a little bit of exercise, fresh air, and, and whatnot. Now, this week, I went to the gym four times. Yesterday, I took today, uh, yesterday I took off. Um, did a lot. I did the sled. I did the rowing machine. I did elliptical, and I did the treadmill. So, and I did at least 20 to 30 minutes each time uh, to make sure that I had some good mental health. I'm very sore, but I feel good today after a couple of days, and I... We do have an elliptical in my apartment building, so I might jump on that today after my podcast because I feel good today. So it's, and I almost feel like I'm guilty when I don't do it. Like yesterday, I kind of felt a little guilty, but I needed the rest. I was really tired. Physically, I was tired. So I was doing this after work every day, going to the gym. So it's, it's very positive for myself. Using positive words to, bet, to boost your mental health. So there's an association they claim, and I, I do think it's valid, using positive words and, and positive mental health. When you're not feeling good, you can slip into a negative self-inner talk, which can become a pattern. Often you may not be aware of your inner voice until you consciously focus on what it's telling you. Some ways to help curve the negative self-talk is to boost the positive, including an examples of be aware of your just beware and recognize negative thoughts. How often do you have them? Once you become aware, you'll be surprised at how often you're telling yourself negative things. I've talked about this in other podcasts. Another thing is stop and challenge that thought. Often negative self-talk is not based in reality. It's everybody thinks I'm stupid. Well, we're pretty sure that that's, that's not the case. Is there actually, is there any actual evidence that supports your way of thinking? So a lot of times you're thinking about what other people perceive you and how you are perceived. Sometimes you don't get that positive feedback from other people, but generally they're worrying about their own problems. 
So we'll try to balance each negative thought with a positive one. Consider how you would view the situation if you had a positive mindset. So that's things that you can do. Ask yourself if the negative thought is helpful in achieving your goals. Consider what you say if a friend or a family member was in the same situation. Can you apply those words to yourself? Write down, journal, whatever, or just think about it, all your positive attributes. Things that you like about yourself, things that you find are positive, that, you know, it could be what other people observe. Take them on, or actually think about them. When you catch yourself practicing self-positive talk and being kind to yourself, making sure that the moment has progress. And, you know, it can take time to reframe a negative mindset into a more positive mental attitude. So be sure to be patient with yourself. Just keep going and recognize each sign of the process. And that's a key component when, when you're talking about having that mind, the positive frame. And, and you have to keep urging yourself. And you know what? I know a lot of people that have apartments that have positive frames, like phrases or words in their apartment, like be yourself, be positive, believe. And, you know, believe in yourself. Believe that you're doing the right thing. Believe that you're positive. Believe that you're, you know, you bring something to the world. And you do. Everyone, you know, everybody does. Everybody has their own unique way of bringing themselves into the world in a positive manner. And you impact people every day in what you do and how you do things. So that's why I was talking about being positive at the workforce, being positive with your friends. Sometimes you have to have that positive mindset and be mindful of other people and make sure... And the biggest thing is about it um, is the body gestures and the gestures and stuff like that when you're talking to people. So those are huge things. And, and I really want to start this year off with a positive podcast so we can start taking care of ourselves physically and emotionally during this year. And it's not every year has its own challenges, but I want you to be ready and I want you to be good to yourself and I want you to set some realistic goals and make sure that you're doing this. So how am I doing this? This is the question that you're going to probably, well, you're talking about doing that, but what are you doing? Helen Helchi this year is doing a lot of different things. I have taken a greater goal in my, my weight and my health, and I have done this. I started this in June, uh, and I've mentioned on some of my TikToks how I've lost about 60 pounds, and it was not easy, um, and it was just doing something different and drinking lots of water, being mindful of what I eat, and trying to not eat as much. Um, you're going to have junk, you're going to have chocolate, but do it in moderation where it doesn't overwhelm your calories or anything like that, or the fat, or stuff like that, so... I mean, I started this process in June where I took two tablespoons of chai seed, lemon juice into a cup, and I would have a fairly good size, and I'd drink the chai seed every day. Now, was I consistent? Absolutely not. There's probably about 10 days out of the uh, about six months that I didn't take it, and there would be two days consecutively. But I got back on. It's very easy. It's the first thing you do in the morning. I have had a lot of positive results. Um, my clothes are falling off me now. I'm going from a double XL. First, I was having a hard time with the double XL. I was getting very big. I was 340 pounds. Not happy. I was happy with myself, but not happy with with the strenuous days and getting up and walking and feeling like my pants were too tight or my shirt or my gut was hanging out. There was a lot of... And I'm very... And through my life, I mean, I've talked about it on my podcast about how I felt about what other people perceive me. So now I'm taking the challenge to, and I don't, and it's just white noise what people are saying to me negatively, but I am going to focus on myself and my goals. My goal is to, my goal is to lose, to get down to hopefully 200 pounds. So I'm, today I weighed in, I was about 278-ish. So that's about 62 pounds now. So I am focusing on 
gradually getting there. It's not going to be an overnight success. It took me years to get this weight on. It's almost like smoking. It took years to quit. So I just have to keep myself positive. Okay, I missed, I missed today, but tomorrow I'll do it. And I get up and I do it. I'm pretty successful. And also having a partner or somebody that's going to support you is very, very key. Someone to motivate you. And there was a couple of days this week, and I did it four days in a row, that I said, I'll take a day off. And then at 3 o'clock, I felt guilty. And I said, no, I'm going. There's no reason why I shouldn't be going. So these are the key things that I'm doing this year. I'm going to work on the podcast a little harder. And I'm looking at different things and maybe reading self-help books and giving my views on it. So maybe some health self-help books that I'm going to start reading and start uh just giving my point of view and how it was helpful to me and what I liked about the book and some pros and cons to it. And hopefully, you know, having materials like that might help other people too. I want to, I would like more interaction from people um, on my chat club or even on my TikTok to say what they would like to hear or if they liked it or they don't like it. I mean, everyone's not going to like what I have to say. I mean, that's fine. Uh, everyone has their own opinion. I'm okay with that. But I would like to see a lot of different things changing in my life. I mean, I'm looking at, you know, getting more involved in the community. And I talked about that in the podcast here. I might look at maybe working a help helpline, um, work at Chemo or something that's going to benefit other people and try to help them through their hard times. So those are some things that I'm thinking about. Um, I do, I did my assist. I think you guys know about that. So... In the grand scheme of things, I'm going to try to be more challenging to myself to do different things on my podcast. And it might not necessarily be about mental health, but it might be something to help you out. Or it might be just an interesting subject to distract yourself for the day. So I'm looking at trying to be more broad, I guess, and not focusing so much on that. Because that can be challenging for myself because there's only so much you can talk about mental health as a person. But maybe what I'll try to do is bring some other people's mental health issues or challenges and maybe what's going on in their life and maybe it can be similar to what you're going through and hopefully I can target that. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know that I'm still alive, still working at it. This is getting on to my third year and um, this is going to be my number 47 or 48 episode i'm not 100 percent sure um should look at that shouldn't i but anyway nevertheless i'm not going to dwell on that i will put it on there that what episode it is and everyone will know so i just want to wish you guys a great new year and get in there positive try to do things and try not if you do go to the gym don't be don't self-talk don't look at other people because other people are doing the same thing as you don't focus on them focus on what you need um, get some positive reinforcement in yourself and start off slow. Um, always my problem was I went in there hard. I'd do 30 minutes of the row and I'd be gassed. And So make sure that you just take small steps when you do this sort of stuff. So make sure that you, t you know, if you're going to make life-changing things, make it make it obtainable goals. You know, you need that. And you write down your successes. Like you go to the gym, you make sure I do it on Facebook. I write down that I went to the gym today. And people all... all if you have good friends, they'll put stuff on there and motivate you. And, and you know, it, it's great. Oh, good to see you. Glad you're doing that. Super. And you'll have a lot of likes and loves and cares. And hopefully that'll bring you into a good routine where you're going to be happier with yourself. I want everyone to focus on different things that are going to make them happy. Happy places and little things. and Don't overlook those things because they're very important in life. So I'm not going to go on too much longer, but I'm going to wish you a happy new year and let's get this year started and we're going to do it the right way. And I'm going to keep going and thanks for listening and I'm going to talk to you really soon. Have a great day or evening. Thank you for listening to the Chat Club Podcast with your host, Alan Hilchey. Please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Google Play or where you download your podcasts. Be sure to check out Chat Club Podcast on Facebook and on Instagram. Remember, there is only one rule in Chat Club. Everybody talks about Chat Club. Be sure to catch our next episode.